Ninjago Dragons Rising was meant to be a brand new start for the Ninjago franchise, a fresh new beginning, topped off with brand new characters as well as a new storyline. Along with these things came the resignation of Tommy Andresen from the show, who if you don't know already was one of the original founders of the Ninjago series. Now without a doubt he was a positive addition to the show, but with him leaving created a void which needed to be filled by the rest of the Ninjago team, and that is why today I'll be going over whether the first 10 episodes of Ninjago Dragons Rising that we've received at the time of making this video are a disappointment or a blessing in disguise. Now to start off, I'll be rating Ninjago Dragons Rising based on these 5 factors. Cinematography, the plot or story arc as some people might say, the pacing, the lore and finally the finale of the first 10 episodes. Now what better way to start off than on cinematography? For those who are unfamiliar what that means, Now I've made a graph here depicting cinematography for other Ninjago seasons and what we see here is that I've placed Ninjago season 8 at the top since it gave us stunning scenes like this. Hence why I think it deserves to be on the top. While on the other end of the spectrum, I placed Ninjago Season 7 at the bottom since it was largely disappointing in terms of the actual look of the episodes since the lighting in these episodes look absolutely horrendous. For example, like this. So you'd probably be asking yourself, where would Ninjago Dragons Rising be placed on this list? Well for starters, Wild Brain, the actual company who design and create the episodes, have switched to Unreal Engine 5 to create the episodes, which called for scenes like this, as well as this, and this which to conclude on my opinion would make me place Ninjago Dragons Rising as very high in terms of cinematography and if you're looking for a rating I'd give it a 7.8 out of 10 which is really good but honestly doesn't beat Ninjago Season 8. Now the next category is the actual plot of the series which is all about the 16 realms merging all together to create one giant realm which for stars is an extremely unique idea. The actual idea of all the realms merging together is extremely interesting in retrospective, but places one slight problem for the actual series, and that is there is no turning back from now. And what I mean by this is that, since all the realms have merged together, there's no going back from this, so this series has to succeed, otherwise you can't make up another story. Now apart from that, the actual idea of the merge in the first place is extremely appealing, and creates a kind of cliffhanger onto why it happened. Now unfortunately, the idea of the merge is sadly pushed away after the first two or three episodes and placed on the sidelines, which is extremely disappointing since the whole series is based on merging all the realms together. Now, we do get the occasional mention of a merge quake here and there in each episode, but apart from that, the idea of the merge has been sidelined for good. And so for my final rating, I'll give the plot a 6.3 out of 10, only because the plot or idea of the merge was pushed away after the first few episodes, hence why I gave it that rating. Now the next factor I'm basing this series on is the actual pacing and speed of the episodes, since that meant much slower pacing and less rushed episodes. Now Dragons Rising has both pros and cons in terms of its pacing, with sometimes the pacing being a little bit too fast. For example, in episode 1 which was labelled The Merge Part 1, we're told by Aaron, the new character, about how he was rescued by the ninja. However, it gives us like a 2 minute preview with nothing else on how he was saved and vice versa, which in my opinion is extremely fast paced. Now on the other end of the spectrum, there is that good pace that us ninja fans have always known and loved, for example episode 4, which I absolutely loved, since firstly it had a fast pace as well as a slow pace combined in one, which made the episode perfect in terms of speed. Now this in essence is good since it mimics the speed of the older seasons, and when I say older seasons I mean seasons 1 to 10, which is a positive for Dragons Rising and a step in the right direction for its future. And so to give a final rating on its pacing, I'll give it a solid 7.5 out of 10, and this is largely due to the return of 22 minute episodes. Now the next criteria is the actual lore portrayed in the series. Now unfortunately this was the first bad category that I found for the series, since the lore portrayed in the first half of Dragons Rising has hit a new low, with literally nothing mentioned from previous seasons apart from a few flashbacks. For example, take a look at the Lloyd flashback in episode 9. Although it technically is a flashback into Lloyd's life, it was done in a complete stupendous way. Just look at the actual character here, why does Lloyd have green eyes? Now yes, it does seem like I'm going on a run about cinematography here, but in all honesty, couldn't the animation studio give up two minutes to just change the eye colour of Lloyd since he never had green eyes up until season 8? This I found to be extremely disappointing since it was most likely done as an attempt so Lego can sell more Lloyd minifigures, which I mean to be fair is a great business move, but in actuality has made lore and flashbacks in Ninjago a laughing stock for us fans. Apart from the flashback, we do see the flashback of Sora, which I mean, it was nice I guess, but definitely nothing special. Now, apart from these two scenes, we're given literally nothing else, which is utterly disappointing since even Crystallized, the worst season as regarded by most fans, gave us an insight into the Overlord's mind, where it was revealed he planted the Great Devourer to corrupt Garmadon, and for Ninjago Dragons Rising to be lacking of the lore element is depressing, so I'm gonna give the lore portrayed in Ninjago Dragons Rising a feeble rating of 2.5 out of 10, which I hope for Dragons Rising Part 2 to amend on. Now finally, my last criteria I'm basing my review on is the actual finale of Part 1, and 
My first impressions were that it's actually pretty good. Lloyd's interaction with the Source Dragon posed a heck of a lot of questions in the Ninjago community since it left us on a cliffhanger. And honestly, adding further, I love that graveyard scene. It was so eerie and ominous, which brought the best out of Ninjago to date. It did everything a good Ninjago finale would do, in my opinion. It had many elements to it, for example, mystery and a cliffhanger and many more. And so to conclude on my opinion on the actual finale, I thought it was amazing and I couldn't really find one bad thing about it. And so I'd give it a final rating of a 7.5 out of 10 only because there are better Ninjago finales than this. But don't get me wrong, this one is amazing as well. And so to give Ninjago Dragons Rising an overall rating, I'd give it a 7.4 out of 10, since it was overall a positive experience. However, it's far from the best season. But if part two does manage to build up on that and somehow give us more good episodes, then my rating will most likely change and go up, which we can only hope for it to happen. Now that wraps up for today's video guys, make sure to comment down below your rating of Ninjago Dragons Rising and your thoughts on the actual series since I want to hear feedback from you guys and also do make sure to drop a like and subscribe since this video took me very long to make and record guys. That being said, see you lot next time.